Hello, welcome to Train Signal. This is the introduction to the SCOM, the System Center Operations Manager consoles, in the System Center Operations Manager 2012 training course. You're going to learn the ins and outs of how you operate both of the Operations Manager consoles. Don't be fooled into thinking that we're going to go into every nitty gritty detail about the consoles because you're going to learn a lot about how the consoles operate throughout this course. You should know that Operations Manager's console was fully revamped in Operations Manager 2007. As such, not a whole lot has changed with regard to the console, although new console elements have been added to support new features in the product. The Operations Manager 2012 web console, on the other hand, is a brand new ground up rewrite in Microsoft's Silverlight technology. It provides access to a subset of the capabilities that are found in the primary console. It's really best to use as just a quick way to remotely check the health of particular elements in your organization. What you're seeing on your screen right now is really the SCOM console. So you can see that there's lots of different areas of the console, but let me bring some out and bring them to your attention. First of all, we have basically the navigation area. This is in the lower left-hand corner of the screen. And because it's set up like this, it's often referred to as an Outlook style interface. Because Outlook was the first program from Microsoft that had a navigation area that operated in quite this way. These are sometimes referred to as wonder bars too. And that's W-U-N-D-E-R bars. But you may hear that term from time to time. Next, we have basically the primary navigation area once you've selected your primary administrative area. So if you have monitoring chosen in the administrative area it's below, now we have all the monitoring options that we have at our disposal. And as you can see right now, just main monitoring is selected. But we could choose task status, Microsoft Windows Server, or any of the items you see in this area. Next, we have the work area. This is where the real work gets done. As you can see in the console on the screen, this is also where most of the information about your environment is displayed. So once you've selected the administrative area and you've selected a navigation node, that's going to dictate what you see on your screen. And I would be remiss if I didn't talk about the menu that stretches across the top of the window. That's become a pretty ubiquitous Microsoft thing and it has not gone away in Operations Manager 2012. And now on your screen, you see the System Center Operations Manager 2012 web console. As I mentioned, this is brand new in Operations Manager 2012. Now in the lower left hand corner of your screen, you can see the biggest difference here. It doesn't have everything that you see in the main console. What you're going to see here is that the web console is pretty useful when it comes to looking at things, but not very useful when it comes to configuring things. So if you want to do things like add a management pack for Exchange, you're not going to do that from the web console. You're going to use the main console to do that. But if you want to see the results after you've tuned and configured that management pack, you can start using the web console to monitor those aspects of your environment. Now we're going to go do a short walkthrough of both the main console and the web console. We want to make sure that there's an understanding of the functions of the various areas of the screen in the main console and help you answer the question of, why don't I see anything? Why is there nothing here yet? And next, you'll learn how to walk through the web console and understand its limitations and then learn how to access that anytime, anywhere tool so that you can access information about your environment even while you're on the road. So, let's go over to the Global Mantics Operations Manager server and get started. And here we are at the Global Mantics Operations Manager server. To start the console for the first time, go to the Start menu, All Programs, Microsoft System Center 2012, and choose Operations Console. And you're going to see the various areas of the screen that I promised you would see earlier on in this lesson. Down here we have the main navigation to migrate to different administrative areas. Then we have the basically the sub-navigation for once you're within a particular, uh, particular administrative area. We've got our workspace here where you can see a lot of information. And we have the menu at the top of the screen. 
right now you're going to see that there's not much to see. We've got no critical alerts, no warnings, and we've got one healthy system. You may be wondering, well, how can we have a healthy system if we haven't started monitoring anything? Well, we can simply click that and see what's healthy. And it happens to be the management server itself. So basically, when you installed Operations Manager, it added enough brains that it could actually monitor itself and the environment. Now, as we go through the various areas of the screen, I want to make sure you understand what each one is for. The monitoring area is pretty obvious. It lets you monitor what's going on in the environment. And you've got this monitoring overview screen that gives you a look kind of at a glance at what's going on. And you can see other types of detail in the monitoring area as well, including active alerts. Are there any alerts that have been raised? For example, is a disk running low on disk space on one of your servers? Any inventory that's been discovered? Well, one system has been discovered because we installed Operations Manager to it. Information about tasks, Unix computers, Windows computers, what have you. As you start adding management packs, which are extensions to Operations Manager, you'll start to see that all of this stuff fills out. Now notice I chose Windows computers, and when I come over here and look at the Windows computer, I see that the management server says healthy, but Windows operating system is not being monitored. Well, why ever could that be? There's a simple reason. We have not yet added a Windows Server Management Pack to Operations Manager. So even though Operations Manager knows that Windows exists on that system, it does not know how to monitor it yet. It will later on once we make some tuning changes, but for now, Operations Manager doesn't know much about Windows at all. But it will. Next we have the authoring area, which is where you can create management packs, create what are called distributed applications, create management pack objects and other kinds of groups. We won't be spending a ton of time in this area in this course, but we will spend a little bit of time later on exploring a little bit of it. We will, however, spend a lot of time in the administration area. And this is an area that we're going to visit very soon so we can start discovering resources that can be brought under the Operations Manager Management Auspices. Right now, you can see we have options for connected management groups, which we're not going to see much because we don't have any management groups that are connected yet. Device management, how many uh, devices are being managed by agents? How many are agent lists? Agent list management is sort of an important concept in Operations Manager, or at least an interesting concept. We're not going to talk too much about agent list monitoring in this course, except a little bit when we get to the vSphere lesson. But it's basically a way that you can actually do some basic monitoring of a Windows system or of another system without having to install a client. Basically, you can have another system proxy for a system without an agent. So Operations Manager can gather performance and availability information on a system that doesn't have the agent installed by having another agent act as its proxy. Basically, you install the agent to another computer and instruct that agent to watch other systems, if you like. How many management servers do we have? Well, we should have one. Are there any devices that have a pending management mode, which you'll understand later on? Are there any Unix or Linux computers that need monitoring? And so on and so forth. You can also, from here, configure network management, which we will be devoting an entire lesson to in this course. Notifications, which help administrators un begin to understand what's going on in the environment. This is how they're notified that, for example, a disk is almost out of space on the email server. And then some other administrative options that we'll go over as necessary throughout this course. And then we have My Workspace. And this is where you can kind of tailor your own workspace to your needs in Operations Manager. We won't spend a lot of time on My Workspace in this course, mostly in monitoring and administration and a little bit in authoring. You're going to notice that there's a lot more on the screen that we haven't talked about. We're not going to go over every single little button yet here in the course. Again, as time goes on and as needs arise, 
and we move forward through the course, you're going to begin to gain an understanding of what the other functions are for and how you can use them to better manage your environment. For now, we're interested in taking a look at the web console. So we'll start Internet Explorer. And we'll browse to the server. Nothing happened. Well, that's because we have to tell it we want to go to Operations Manager. So we're going to browse to SCOM 12-1 slash Operations Manager. When we were trying to go there without the Operations Manager piece, we were going to the web root. You'll notice right now that nothing works because we have to install Silverlight in order for Operations Manager's console to operate. So we'll click now to install it and just follow the instructions on the screen. It's very easy. Remember, you'll have to do this from any machine on which you intend to view the web console. And with that out of the way, we'll simply click Close. Now, the first time you run the web console, it says there's some additional configuration that needs to be done. So we'll click Configure. First of all, it's going to say, you want to run this Silverlight Client Configuration Tool. This will configure Silverlight for Operations Manager. Say Run. And we have the Operations Manager Web Console was successfully configured on this computer. Just refresh this page. Once you run that, just refresh that page, and then you'll be signed into the System Center uh, 2012 Operations Manager Web Console. Now, I didn't have to provide a username and password because it used a single sign-on. It knows that I'm logged into Windows as Global Mantics Administrator. If I was attempting to log in from a non-domain join machine, however, or from a machine that didn't, from a, using a user account that did not have rights to the web console, I'd be prompted for a username and password. And as you can see here, it's a pretty simplistic console, but it gives you some information about what's happening in the environment. So we can look at Operations Manager and maybe get some information about the Operations Manager environment. But remember, we don't have any management packs loaded yet, so there's really not that much to see. You can see here we have some information about uh, the management group health trend over the past seven days. We haven't even been up and running for seven days yet, but you can see that we can get information about some history in the, in the environment to, begin, to gain an understanding for what might be happening in the environment when things go awry. Then we have management group health overall. So it's a little bit bigger. And you can get sort of a little diagram of the management group. It won't be that interesting right now, but you'll get an idea for how everything is laid out. I'm going to move this over to get rid of it for a minute. But you can see that we have a group diagram for the entire operations manager environment here. Not everything is configured yet. But once it is, this will expand to include more information. And this actually becomes useful later on when you're looking for health in other areas. It's really all there is to see in the web console right now. Um, again, throughout this course, there may be other times when you'll see um, the web console in action. But we'll mostly be spending our time in the main console. Bear in mind that we don't see much yet because of the lack of management packs, but that's a situation we'll be soon rectifying. Thank you for listening, and I look forward to seeing you in the next lesson.